Uh, good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Basically, Chandra has already briefly dis uh, elaborately discussed everything about the CDM, and I am working as a project coordinator and I'm interacting with the project developers on a day-to-day -day basis in the ministry for the project approval and host country approval things. So, in addition to Chandra's thing, I will just briefly give an overview of the CDM in Indian aspect. So it is basically what is CTM he has already mentioned. And under Kato Protocol in 1997, it has developed three market-based mechanisms, basically project-based approach. And these are international emission trading, joint implementation, and clean development mechanism. And we are interested today for this clean development mechanism. It is basically an arrangement allowing the annex one countries with a greenhouse gas reduction commitment to invest in projects that reduce GHG emission in developed countries as an alternative to more expensive emission reduction in their own countries. Chandra has already explained those things. I am not going to detail in that. So basically, the modalities and procedures of this CDM aspect has been derived in Article 12 of Kyoto Protocol. And entire modalities was developed in the COF seven, that is Maraka Shakar, for the initiating the CDM activities. In general, it allows the emission reduction in developing countries to earn certified emission reduction, each equivalent to one ton of carbon dioxide. These CERs can be traded and sold and used by Annex 1 industrial countries to meet their quantified emission limitation and reduction targets under KP. The mechanism stimulates sustainable development and emission reduction. It has both options and uh, Chandra has already spoken to those issues. So giving flexibility to annex world <coughs> country to meet their emission reduction or limitation targets and developing countries in achieving their sustainable development. This is the basic criteria. And in between to these things, there are other provision of financial investment in the developing countries and technology transfer as part of this. Thing that development mechanism. So project qualifies through a rigorous and public registration and issuance process designed to ensure real, measurable and verifiable emission reduction that are additional to what would have occurred without this project. This is basically in nutshell what is CDM is. And uh, when we talk about the CDM in India, then basically Indian India has ratified KP in 19, uh, 2002, and thereafter, under the Kyoto Protocol, they have to establish the national CDM authority for developing the CDM project activities. So the, this NCDM was established in 2003 with the approval of the cabinet. And it functions, it is a multi-ministerial body, functions with the chairman as secretary MOEF, and it is placed in MOEF and there are members from different ministries and planning commissions. And basically in the project uh, development cycle, the project developers uh, submit this project design document and PCN to this NCDMA and based on the review of the project, a meeting is arranged with this project developer. They give a brief presentation of their project and based on the evaluation, at this host country approval is issued to them. This is in nutshell, but the process is not so simple. We have standards there to follow. We have a checklist also. And uh, since 2000, uh, July 2010, we are having this entire operation online. So earlier we, earlier we used to get this hard copy of the project design document and PCN in 20 copies. So to reduce this paper consumption in bulk, from July 2010 onwards, <coughs> where it is totally paperless office now. <coughs> so based on eligibility under CDM, basically basic eligibility is participation is voluntary and it is reducing GHG emission in real and measurable form and it is sustainable and supporting sustainable development in the area or in the country as a whole. And for the specific criteria of sustainable development, we are having the social well-being, economic well-being, environmental well-being, and technological well-being, 
are the measures to follow the sustainable criteria. So while developing the CDM, NCDMA, this uh, authority, there were some development with the Ministry of Power and GTZ and Indo-German Energy Program. And the baseline of carbon dioxide emission was developed by the CEA. And all this has placed nicely before the start of this CDM activities in India. And now India is a proactive player in the field with larger projects. Basically, we are second position what Chanda has already explained after China. So this is the project status. He has already briefly said. And out of 3,563 projects, we are having 739 projects. This is what we have registered so far. Mm -hmm. But where is the host country approval is concerned? We have given 2,115 projects till to 30, uh, 31st of October 2011. And in the process, in this nature, there are uh, 2,115 projects, and they have facilitated an investment of 3,39,521 crores. <coughs> this is a mind-boggling figures. If we take the JEP grant totally, it is manifold of that grant. Size of this investment is so huge. And if we consider this project, 90% of project developed under CDM are from private sectors. Hardly few PSUs and few government departments are initiating few limited number of projects, but 95, more than 90% are from the private industries. So it is basically private sectors coming with the development of the projects. And if all these projects are registered under the CDM executive board, the potential is there to generate 709 million CERs by the year 2012. And as on 31st October, the CERs issued is 121 million. So this is in brief the uh, project status in India. Then this is the trend of approved project India. The DNA activity started in 2003, and slowly it has picked up, and the project's numbers were going up. And 2009, it reached the peak. And since 2010 and 11, there is a declining trend, basically. So due to this may be due to the uncertain future of CDM after post first commitment period, that is 2012. But basically, still, we are having around 180 projects in pipelines. So 2011, again, it will be the uh, deep will be not so deep, but it will be around 300 projects till 2011. So considering all these projects, what we have already approved from the DNA, we did a distribution of the project, sector-wise distribution. There are about 15 sectors identified <coughs> in CTM. And when we did a distribution of these projects in different sectors. So we found this energy industry, renewable and non-renewable energy sources, are having 77% of the projects. <coughs> and their accumulated certified emission reduction is around 67.3%. And the investment in this sector is 91.19%. And the second sector in this sector is manufacturing. And the, if we consider the number of uh, lesser projects in different sectors, then we should say the construction and solventude, there is no project so far. And this fugitive emission and consumption of halocarbons and sulfur dioxide, the number of projects are limited. Their number is six, but their contribution to Certified emission reduction is around 12 percent. That's the second highest. And their investment is also too low. But whereas the certified emission reduction is concerned, they are having the second position. Similar way, we have done a distribution of the projects in a state-wise manner. In the state-wise manner, Tamil Nadu with 271 projects is leading the table, followed by Maharashtra, Gujarat and Karnataka. <coughs> and the investment wise, it is the Maharashtra, which is having 52,509 crore. And it is about 16.61%. And whereas the certified emission reduction is concerned, it is the Gujarat with 231 projects. It is having about 18.33% of the certified emission reductions. And the total investment is about second. It is 16.40%. 40%. 
when you consider the other states, their positions are not so good with le lesser number of projects, with less number, uh, 10 number of projects. There are several states, Arunachal Pradesh, Bihar, Goa, Jammu Kashmir, Meghalaya, Pondicherry, Sikkim, and Tripura. And these projects are too significant, but there is presence. And we have one project with Tata Group under bilateral agreement <coughs> with Bhutan that is also there in our account. And in addition to this project, there are some multi-state projects. So projects are operated in different state together with the investment from different state governments or different industries from that state. So this is all over the state wise. Considering this pattern, we, if we, we can say that majority of this certified emission generation are from few projects and maximum of these projects are pipeline are small scale project and these are develop unilaterally without any bilateral or any uh, transaction from our side, basically. The distribution of projects is not uniform across the sectoral scopes, as the projects in wind, biomass, and hydro are dominating the total list. The projects are concentrated in few select states. These are Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Maharashtra, and few other states having moderately significant numbers but rest of the states are having minimum numbers of projects. Thus, in spite of the efforts of the government and active participation of private sectors, there is scope to accelerate the uniform growth of CDM across the country. There is still scope is there. So, in the, this observation, again, is, uh, I did some analysis of the energy fuel mix from the 2000 and 2011. So, if we consider the total install <laughs> capacity of the electricity in 2000, it was 91,000 megawatt. And during that time, the thermal cons contribution was 73%, renewable was 1.5%, nuclear was 2%, and hydel was 23.5%. In 2005, the install capacity was 1.23,462 uh, 1, megawatt and the contribution of the renewable has increased up to 5%. And similarly, in 2000, January 2011, contribution uh, install capacity is 173,626 <coughs> megawatt, and renewable has increased up to 10.6%. So in overall, since 2000, overall install capacity has increased up to 82,000 megawatt, and contribution of en renewable energy has increased from 1.5% 1 1 to 10.6%. And there is an observation that in the thermal power, there has been a little decrease from 73% to 65% in 2011. And if we consider 2005 figures, so it will be from 66% to 65%. So 1% decrease is there in the thermal power sector as such. So considering uh, this background, if we talk about this leapfrog of technology, basically considering the basic purpose of CDM, this is sustainable development, financial investment, and technology transfer. It may be said that the majority of these projects in the country are developed unilaterally without much financial investment and technology transfer. Yet, overall, it is supporting the global efforts of mitigating GHG emissions under the Kyoto Protocol of UNFCC for protecting the climate system. And if we consider this emission reduction, I think it, it, it will contribute significantly on the per capita basis as well. If we take this per capita emission of the country and the CDM project, that there is significant decrease in per capita basis as well. In the process of this CDM development, the project developers, basically the private sectors, has mobilized huge financial resources, that is up to 3,39,521 crores in developing CDM projects in the country. This amount is quite significant amount. Without CDM, it was never possible to mobilize such huge amount in the country. This investment of this nature has, is helping technology diffusion Basically, there is technology transfer aspect is there in CDM. But uh, truly speaking, there is no such development on this front. 
But whereas technology di diffusion is concerned in the energy efficiency, renewable energy, solar, photovoltaic, solar thermal, wind turbine, and energy efficiency sectors, there is significant technology diffusion has taken place due to the CDM projects. And such, uh, we talk about sustainable development. Basically, sustainable development is re really a relative consideration. It depends area to area, region to region, and place to place where the projects are. If in a rural area, if one people is getting employment <coughs> or some livelihood support with the very basic tiny CDM projects, even that project may be considered as sustainable project. So it is a very, very relative terminology. It may be used in different sense, different places, different aspects. So it is a controversial thing always. But uh, to, be, to be very frank, all this investment in the country or in a local area, really providing employment to certain extent, livelihood support to certain extent. So all this positive aspect, we consider it is social well-being, technological well-being, economical well-being, and environmental well-being. So basically, during this project development, in larger scale project, environmental clearance is mandatory. So if it is environmentally negative impact is there, we don't consider those project. And uh, social development, basically, <coughs> truly speaking, if there is investment in, in a place for development of a project, there will be certainly some development activity in infrastructure, in de employment generation, in livelihood. So those can be taken as positive as sake for the social aspect. Financial additionality in the sense, basic purpose of CDM is to get financial investment in the country from the outset. So direct way, very almost um, more uh, number of projects are in unilaterally developed. So financial aspect from bilateral aspect is very rare. But if you take the investment point, there is huge investment is occurring due to CTM. So considering all these considerations, we think sustainable development aspect <laughs> is positive in CTM. And considering this trend, I think it will be definitely leapfrogging the technology.